I worked in the pots most of my life. Loved it. Stoke-on-Trent, it's a little backwater. No one in this country is interested in Stoke-on-Trent. It is nice living in Stoke. It's just poor, really. People are very angry, and I think people just want change. Eight months ago, Stoke-on-Trent sent tremors through the political establishment when almost 70% of voters here opted to leave the EU. It was a signifier of the fault lines opening up in Britain. The consequences are still unknown. At the oatcake shop near Stoke's vast Bentley estate, people queued to buy what was once the staple food of the potteries. The recipe for oat cakes hasn't changed much in Stoke-on-Trent for centuries. The same can't be said for the place. My mum and my dad never, ever were out to work when I was a kid, ever. Both of them worked. We, uh, we, we weren't rich, but we weren't like we are today. My childhood is and will always be Barry than what his childhood's going to be. Families like Kirsty's have lived around Stokes Bentley estate for generations. Once, they expected to walk into a job, in the mines, the steelworks, or the pottery industry for which Stoke is still famed. Her aunt Marie remembers those times. I worked in the pots most of my life. You come home at night, you were absolutely shattered, but you just had a family. They were really, really your friends, and everybody, just everybody helped everybody. They shut all these pot places down and there was no help. There was nothing. They were just as if they just disappeared off the face of the earth. There's a hell of a lot of people depressed. A hell of a lot of people struggling money-wise and debt. And it isn't as if they go on holiday and got a fancy car. They don't have cars. They don't go on holiday. There's people who work and they're slogging and they've got nothing, and they're sort of one week to the next, hand to mouth. It's like we have the forgotten. The overwhelming outvote was a wake-up call. Now all eyes are on Stoke once again. The Labour MP for Stoke-on-Trent Central, Tristram Hunt, is standing down. The by-election he's triggered is being seen as a test of whether voters in this Labour heartland are as loyal to the party as they once were. Would everyone on this estate have voted Labour in the past? In my opinion, yes. And why was that? They were just the working man, weren't they? they were the working man. It's what your mum and dad did, so you did it. You know, it was, it was tradition, really. There used to be a saying, if you put a monkey up for Labour, the people would vote for it. Six and eight, 68. Legs, 11. Oh, thank you. Certainty comes in other forms wherever you travel in Stoke. These days, you're more likely to meet an outvoter than a Labour one, and many of them will tell you how much more vibrant the place used to be. It changed because all the shops had gone. They were sort of just, they left empty, falling down. There used to be 20 pubs along this high street. 20 pubs. You know how many there are now? None. Chris Humphreys runs the pensioner events at her local community centre and voted out. I thought that was probably going to be the best thing because we probably could make the elitist uh, government start thinking about the whole of the population. Yeah? Do you feel that there is an elite and they don't listen? Yes. Yeah. Many here told me they do still support Labour. But turning round the party's electoral fortunes is still a gamble. In the Stoke Central constituency, Labour lost 27% of its vote share in the last two decades. We always voted Labour, but then I got thinking about lots of things. Labour are fighting amongst themselves, aren't they? And there don't seem to be no leadership there. And UKIP seem to... I don't know, they seem to be know what the people want, really. They're so prosperous down in London. I think they think we're a load of idiots or something like that. Do you think that the people you're talking about in the South, do you think we'd listen if, if you voted in a UKIP candidate <laughs> round here? I don't think so. I don't think they want to know anything about us up and up. 
the fray is just beginning. UKIP sent in the big guns to persuade voters yeah. that Labour's had its chance. Yeah. Hi, UKIP came Hi. second in Stoke Central at the last election. It'll take a seismic shift, though, to oust Labour from its traditional base. But if it's going to happen anywhere, it'll happen in a place where anti-EU sentiment is high. Plenty of people I've spoken to say they've had UKIP knock on their door in the past few days. The party's clearly sending an opportunity to make a real breakthrough into Labour's heartland. If they do, it'll be down in part to a feeling for many that for too long the Labour Party took their vote for granted. I've lived here now for about 25 years and nobody has ever knocked on my door during an election time, ever. So the Labour Party don't come? Never. Conservatives don't come? Never. Well, Conservatives aren't going to come, are they? Liberal Democrats don't come? And I'm not saying they've never knocked on a door, they've never knocked on my door. And UKIP? Have they knocked? Last yesterday. Can we count on your vote? I said no. Labour may still be able to count on Marie, but allegiances in politics aren't as solid as they once were, unlike loyalty to a football club. Here, people take pride in Premier League Stoke City's success story. This is one of the few things that puts us on the map. The football? Um, yeah. You know, we've, we, we were, my father was in the mine, that, you know, there used to be a coal mine here, you know, one of the biggest in the country. It's all gone now. I think it would be a kick in the teeth of the Labour Party if they lost, because this city, you, you can virtually guarantee, there's three Labour MPs every time. In a place where the bedrock of support for leaving the EU came from traditional working-class Labour voters, perhaps the referendum illustrates just how much we've shifted as a nation. I'm a Conservative and you won't get too many of those in Stoke, but I wonder how many, you know, we've got the by-election coming up and I, it'll be very interesting for me to see who gets in because the strong, I think it's over 60 years since, since we've had a non-Labour MP. People used to really associate strongly with political parties, but do you think that's changed in Britain? I think most definitely it's uh, did you vote in or did you vote out now, and, and the lines are so blurred between the political parties that, that you can sometimes excuse people for not knowing who they really support. Those people that aren't from Stoke or have just seen we voted 70% to leave think that we're probably racist and uh, unintelligent, and that's far from the truth. Stoke can seem a city of the left behind, but there's actually much more to be positive about than the stereotypes suggest. Money's going into regeneration, knocking down the old for better homes. What's left of the pottery industry is thriving. And though wages are low and jobs still insecure, unemployment has fallen significantly. Just watch it doesn't touch the walls because it's a bit damp and muddy. After seven years on the dole, Alex Petula now has a paid job with Bentley Volunteers, a charity on the estate. I'm glad the pits have closed because I want to want to work in the pits. You know, I'd much prefer we work in a warm warehouse, you know, with proper training and health and safety and all that. Because the story, like I say, the stories my dad's told me, there was no health and safety. You know, there was nothing safe about working in the pit. As a Remainer, Alex is a rarity in Stoke. He told me he might now consider voting Liberal Democrat and has no truck with those he believes wrongly blame others for their problems. The first thing most people say is, you know, well, you can't get any jobs because of the Polish or whatever. But, you know, the Polish are willing to come in and do the work for that wage. They think it's demeaning. You know, I've been work, I work 40 years, blah, blah. Well, you know, that's life. That's what happens, isn't it? You know, you've got to move on. People's fears about immigration help make UKIP a viable proposition here. But the by-election isn't just a huge test of Labour support. Winning is also vital for UKIP, who've pledged to replace Labour across swathes of England. If they win, they'll have started a transition from a Brexit party to a party of working people. If they lose, they'll be written off as irrelevant in this post-referendum world. For the people of Stoke, though, life isn't as binary. Whoever the winner, the difference to this place will only come if prospects improve and lives take a turn for the better. <laughs>